Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to Warhammer Underworlds Online. As the name non too subtly suggests, this is the digitalized version of Warhammer Underworlds, the Games Workshop tabletop game that blends a bit of miniature warfare with deck-based card combat. An intriguing prospect which we're going to have a look at today. It is sadly, of course, set in the Age of Shitmar, but uh, there's a bit of a drought going on with uh, Warhammer titles recently, so we shall take what we are given. We start, of course, by having a look at the decks. The game should be entering early access as you watch this video, with four starting decks. The uh, Sigmarines, Chaos, the Orcs, and the Undead. These are uh, different decks with different fighters, different abilities, and so on, and also different ways of balancing. So you may notice that the Sepulchre Stalkers, or Guards actually, I keep saying thinking Stalkers because of the Starters one, has a lot of Skeletons, whereas the Sigmarines have three dudes. This is uh, considerably due to the fact that the Sigmarines are also a little bit powerful than the individual Skeleton. We are going to be playing Chaos, however, because I think they perfectly exemplify one of the issues I personally have with the game, but that other people might in fact find a charming thing instead. So, first let's look at the deck. So you start out by looking at the statistics of your fighters. So Magor here has a movement of 3, a defense of 1 block, so he needs a block result on the uh, dice to come up to successfully defend himself. We'll get more into the dice systems once we're actually into a match, and he has 4 wounds so he can take 4 points of damage before he falls down and becomes very sad and very dead. He also has a weapon, the Demonic Axe, range 1, dice 2, damage 2, along with two standard abilities like Guard and of course Move. Additionally, if he succeeds in becoming inspired, in this case it happens after he has successfully attacked an opponent, then you will see that his stats change. He gains one more per point of movement, and he gains a new weapon, the Ravenous Axe, which deals 3 damage instead of 2. This weapon also has a cleave effect, whilst Zarzuk Blood Sighter, he has a knockback 1 weighty Gorax. Garthuk has a special ability here as well. This fighter cannot be driven back, so he can't be knocked back. Normally, if you are successfully attacked, the character will be driven back, but that does not apply to this guy. Riptooth has a special as well, in that he cannot equip upgrades with an attack action, which is very sad for the little doggo. The uh, doggo's upgrades, by the way, is dodge 2, so there you see the difference. He needs dodge once these guys need block to defend themselves. The attacks can also have different effects, such as um, cleave, or in this case, reaction. Reaction is an action that is taken if your unit is attacked and it successfully defends that attack. Then it may is uh, allowed to make one reaction attack with this weapon. So, one dice, one damage. Right, those are your fighters, fairly straightforward. Then you have your objectives. These are the in-game objectives that you are supposed to achieve to gain glory points, which are the victory points. Whoever has the most glory points at the end of the game is the victor of the round. So we've got some fairly simple one, like hold this specific objective, all the way up to the pretty complex one of killing the entire enemy team. And of course they vary in uh, degrees of glory points depending a great deal upon how difficult, how easy they are, how complex they are to achieve. Fairly nice system. It's a little bit short on cards. Um, that goes for the gambit and upgrades as well, but I'm assuming that is something that they will fix with um, packs in the future and new factions and so on. Then you have gambits. These are essentially spells that allows you to decrease an enemy's movement by two, for example, or give special effects. Some of them also have a qualifier, like Blood Frenzy, for example, is a reaction. So you can only play this after an attack action or ploy that takes a fighter out of action. So you can't just play that willy-nilly, for example. Then you have upgrades. These are buffs or even pieces of equipment that are, in some cases, character specific, so the demonic maw can only be given to Magor, or in some cases of the more uh, generalized one, for example greater strength can be given to anyone, or greater speed. I do like the idea of specialized upgrades, that's pretty neat. 
Of course, it depends upon whether or not you actually get them, but there are some nice combinations there. Uh, for example, Hero Slay, which is a generalized weapon that does four damage, which is probably enough to kill most enemy characters, but with only one dice. If you combine that with Magor's Trophy Hunter, then you've got a halfway decent chance of slaying an enemy character in one attack, gaining yourself two glory points, which is quite neat, of course. Again, there's, uh, there's, there's not enough cards, I feel, to really make this as in-depth and interesting a system as it probably should be, but again, I am assuming that is something that they are going to be uh, working on and adding to over the course of the game's lifetime. Alright, let us delve into a bot match, shall we? Who shall we fight? Um, Orkies? Orkies? Hmm, yes, Orkies, why not? It's always fun fighting the Orcs, isn't it? First then, we roll off to see who gets to choose a board. In this case, uh, that looks like a victory to me, yep. So I get to choose a reaction now. So he chooses the board, and I get to choose mine afterwards. So these icons are where you get to deploy troops. So you can do some strategy here. I think I will take um, the Sishian Star Dial, perhaps? The Shattered Tower? Mm, no, Sushian Star Dial. And I'm going to move this a little bit over to the side here, like so, because I want to minimize the frontage just a little bit. You, uh, you can potentially also move it over to here, and you can move it like this as well, of course. This... This is a kind of a neat system. I like this. It allows for some rather interesting strategies on occasion. It's a, it's a decent thing, certainly. You can also rotate it, which is, in this case, uh, I think not much better, honestly, so I'll just keep it as it. Right, let us uh, get into the match then. Actually, did I ever rotate it incorrectly there? I've forgotten why I was doing the thing I was doing, and suddenly I'm very sad. Okay, there we are. That's good enough. Right, now we place objective. So they get to place the first one. Um, I want to be fairly aggressive, so I'm going to um, plonk down one deep inside of their board. Right there. They place one over there. Okay. Then I'm going to put uh, one... One down there. One down there as well, and then one final objective for five objectives total. So holding them doesn't really necessarily do anything specifically, but it's dependent upon your objective hand. So this is the battlefield. It's uh, pretty nice. It's quite nice looking. I like it. It's all deep uh, on the enemy side, which is fine because I want to. That's where I want to be regardless. So what do we got? I can redraw my hand here: invisible wall, healing potion, demonic resilience, brutal charge, blood corn. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's good. Objectives? Supremacy. And if you hold three or more objectives... Ugh, uh, can I pull that off? Possibly. Okay. Tactical supremacy. That would be a good combo. Denial. Um, no enemy fights in your territory. Right, well, we'll keep that. We'll keep it. We'll pass the turn. We won't uh, discard anything. Alright, so that looks... is that a tie? No, that's that's to me, is it? Yeah. Select player to place fighter first. I think I'll place my stuff first. Right, so assuming we're going to try and go for the big one, I'm going to place Riptooth here, because he's a nippy little boy. Girl. Thing. Who knows, really. Then we're going to put... Um, Zaruk. I'm gonna place it. No, actually, no, no, no. Let's not place Zaruk there. Let's place Garthok there. That makes a bit more sense. Mm, they're going quite aggressive as well, are they? Okay, well, that does. That's not too surprising. And we'll put Zaruk there. And last guy there. All right. Then we roll off as who gets the first turn. I get another dice because I chose to place my dudes last. So I get the first turn there. Lovely. That is quite wonderful. So, what do we want to do? So you have an activation phase and then you have a power phase in which you can play some cards, possibly. 
So, one, two, three. I could charge him. Which means we've got a 2v1 there. If I want to play it, take these. So, I kind of want to... What I kind of want to do is... Get that with Riptooth. Get that with Garthok. And then get that with Magor, possibly, then move in Zaruk. I'm a little bit worried about Bonecutter, because he deals three damage with that giant axe of his, which um, is less than ideal, really. Mm. Is there anyone else on their team that deals uh, three damage by chance? Guzag. Guzag deals three damage as well. Ah, he only deals that damage when he's inspired, does he? Okay, well, that's something. They get inspired when you hit them, so you, you kind of don't want to attack them, but at the same time, being Chaos, I kind of do want to attack them, because I can potentially murder them nice and quick. And of course, my Inspired also is dependent upon actually being able to um, kill their guys. So I believe I could possibly knock him back, and he could charge me, though. Hmm. <laughs> I am thinking, so Riptooth is a little bit close here, so I'm thinking I want to get him, I'm going to move him up first. I want to get him inspired, so I'm going to use the two dice to attack Bonecutter and grab that objective, hoping to, well, so much for that. The RNG god says get fucked, and I do not get my inspiration, which is really, really bad. Uh, let's play Demonic Resilience. Because uh, that seems like a very good good idea here, so as to try and avoid taking damage. They tried playing a card, but uh, I think it might have failed because they rolled the dice there. Um, invisible walls. I'm halfway tempted to cast that as well right now, just to slow them down as much as humanly possible. Or maybe glory to corn. Extra dice hmm, for a charge attack. First, first attack, actually. Um, I don't have anyone that can really kill anything with that right now, so... I think I'm just going to try and fuck with their movement speed. Right, so... The dice system here. This is one of the big contention points. Um, because... Am I doing that as well? My heart in the net? No. Nah. Because you're not throwing a lot of dice around in this game. There's there's relatively few dice being tossed uh, tossed about here. Uh, Bone Cutter is going to make an attack against Riptooth. He fails. Okay, that's that's nice. So at tops, you can probably get three, maybe four dice, possibly. But that's about it. That's that's about all the dice you are likely to be able to throw around the board. Which means that you don't necessarily have that much in the way of um, an ability to hedge your bets, shall we say. Right, so that guy has... Uh, he's not charged for anything, so he can keep attacking, so I don't really want to hit him necessarily. I don't really want to get up... See, I kind of want to try and get the three objectives. Uh, which would be very nice. Three and four. Uh, that's not the one. Uh, supremacy. Three or more objectives, but... I really don't want to get up close to Gerzag either, honestly. I'm quite hesitant to do that. Because he does hit pretty hard. Not that he couldn't just waffle over and attack me as well, mind you. Uh, that's a bit of a difficult one. But you can't really... So, how do you put that? In a game like, for example, um, Warhammer 40k, yeah? You have a lot of dice being tossed about. A lot of dice. You can have huge handfuls of dice being tossed about. In that case, the, the chance of a bad roll becomes smaller the more dice you are throwing. So does the chance of a good roll. It gives you a greater chance of averaging out, essentially. So if you're tossing, say, 30 dice, you'll have a decent understanding of, okay, I can probably expect to get this much and this much and that much, you know? You'll have a way to essentially calculate that in your head. Once you are throwing a handful of dice... Oh, well, shit, there you go. And that doesn't matter because that's a crit, so I get hit regardless. And they also managed to successfully get a healing potion, so fuck me, I suppose. Okay, let's try and play our own healing potion. Nope, 
I get dicked. And when you when you're throwing around one dice, two dice, etc., it's it's a lot more up to just pure chance, just pure undulated chance, and you can't really play the odds at that point. Um, this is your ability, you know, this is your ability to do things. Uh, this is the extent of your ability to do these things. You can't really build up a serious amount of modifiers and go, okay, I've really hedged my bet here. I should be able to move up, get the attack off, and have this be as effective as I can make it be. Instead, you end up in a situation where you are trusting in like a one in three chance very often. Like even moving up Riptooth, there, that was that was a that was about as good a bet as you could normally expect to have it be. Because he was gonna get three attacks, and he only really needed to get one of those off, and then he only needs to get it past one enemy block action. But he didn't get any of those off, and so I was really relying on him getting inspired. Because if he got inspired, he would then have had two dodge uh, abilities, which might then have allowed him to get out of the way of enemy incoming attacks a lot easier. It would basically double his chances. But since I just didn't get that, I am in a much worse pos worse position. That wasn't a bad. That wasn't. That wasn't like a crazy thing to do. That was a fairly reasonable thing to do by most estimations. The odds of him getting off that attack were pretty damn good. But, again, ah, and the, the odds of the orc just getting critical after critical after critical were of course also tiny, but as you see, it doesn't matter. Now, there is a huge quantity of RNG when you're tossing around this few dice, and a very, very small chance of really trying to build up enough advantage in your favour. Some people prefer that because they feel it adds, uh, it, it's, it leads to less stale gameplay, basically. Um, I still kind of want to go for Supremacy. I'm going to get rid of that, though. I'm going to keep that. Um, I'd like to keep Brutal Charge as well, and Glory to Quorn. Tack Dice would be nice. Actually, let me just keep that. I want some more cards. Um, yeah, so some people prefer it because they feel it leads to more action-packed gameplay with greater variety in what's going on. You know, it's, it's more volatile. Um, and that's entirely fair as well. But for me... I'm not a big fan of that style of gameplay because I feel that I can't really plan things out. I can't really make up a good strategy because so much is dependent on just that one roll of the dice and it's that one roll of the dice feelings, feelings um, all the time almost. Okay, so they get two attacks there, so I can't block that. Oh, actually, hold on. That was a crit. All right, so he did everything right there. Uh, there, there was nothing he did wrong. He got about as good of a chance there as he possibly could have, but due to RNG, it just didn't matter again. For me, it gets way too volatile when you do it like that. I'm not a huge fan of it. Oh, God, I'm not really in a good position to get this. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm not really in a good position to hold three victory points right now, which is somewhat unfortunate. I uh, don't have Trophy Hunter either, which is even more unfortunate. Um, I could... Magor isn't inspired, so he doesn't have his attack bonus. I don't have anyone that could potentially take a Gurzag in one round of combat. Um, I could go over there and grab that, but that will leave me rather exposed. Uh, but I kind of want to sit on that objective, though. But I can, I can keep that in the back of my... In the back, 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 uh, just, you know, in reserve, and I can maybe claim it later. Because I am down by two victory points now, and I don't have a clear way to actually kill any of their characters. Uh, they have a significant advantage me over there. Um, on me there. And I don't have a good weapon. 
I could potentially get a Demonic Maw on my Gore. That would help out a fair bit. And that would mean that I wouldn't have to empower to um, inspire him. So let's try an attack against Gorzak. Right, okay, so that's me stacking the ult as much as I possibly can in my favor, and that did actually do some good damage. Good, good, good. Uh, pushing him back, I think I'm going to push him right back here, actually. So I might be able to hit him with Garthok without using a charge, because now that I'm one character down, I still have the same amount of activations as the enemy, but... When you charge someone, you can't use that character again. So it, it becomes a bit more about positioning at that point again. All right, that's, that's yet another crit. Um, and I do not... I'm getting a good amount of shields, but I am not getting the crits. And I need the crits because the crits are the only things that can actually save me right now, which is a little bit of the issue here. All right... I mean, I'm probably best off just trying to get to Gurzag, honestly, and at least try and level the playing field a little bit. That's two hits. That should be, uh, that should be Gurzag down then. There you go. It's not that it is... And also, to, point, to be a bit more precise, it is not at all that there isn't any strategery in the game. Absolutely not. Um, vampiric weapon... Range field attack. So that's for uh, for Zarkus. Zarkus moves right now. Um, Demonic Maw would give me three. Vampiric Weapon would be better, but I can't. I, I really can't guarantee that uh, poor Garthok will be surviving two rounds of combat. That is unreasonable. So. Uh, do you want to buff Zarkus? I mean, he's in a good position to charge next turn. No, I think we're going to play the Demonic more on Magor since he hasn't been able to be inspired yet. Because I don't think there's any good chance of me getting that objective right now, sadly. Okay, that was lucky. Um... Because there is definitely stuff like positioning, uh, minimizing the risk, you know, play, playing the field as much as you can. You still have to stack the odds as much as you can in your favor, obviously. There is just a, a fairly big limitation as to just how much you can stack them. Like, that, that was very lucky for me, for example. Um, it does buff him up, it does inspire him, of course, but that's fine. Uh, he's charged now, so he can't attack me again. I wish I could have pushed him maybe a little... One over there, that would have been great, because that would actually have blocked Basha, I think. No, no, never mind, he could have gone through there regardless, it doesn't really matter. They are getting a pretty damn big lead on the objective's point, though, which is uh, unfortunate. Oh, a cleave action, well, that is terrifying. Um, he can't actually use it, though, but he can use it, and I think he gets it the next time he attacks, anyways. Uh, right now, I, I'm in a position where I can't really claim, because I need three or more objectives, and I've only got three guys, so that's not a thing. So I need to try and go for denial. That will give me a three victory points in the end phase, so that will allow me to pull just ahead of them, assuming they get no more points. Annihilation is looking very dicey at this point, so I'm probably going to toss that and Supremacy the next turn. Uh, but Supremacy looked promising, but did, didn't quite work out. Right, Magor. Uh, unfortunately, you are not inspired. If he were inspired, I could have reached Haka and maybe killed him, but sadly, that is not an option now. Now, I think probably Bone Cutter is uh, the best, because there, there's no real reason for me to just chill out on this objective anymore. So we're gonna take a nice big fat charge around there, get ourselves into a position to help out next turn if possible. That's a crit, does he get a crit? He does, but I think since I have two dice, yes, that is a success. Ah, damn it, fourth, uh, fourth one for them. I am quite badly behind right now, that's too bad. Let's move him out of combat with Garthug, just so he can't at least just free attack me, maybe. Makes a charge. Oh, Jesus. Oh, actually, that's... I, I think the, the, the AI has some issues, let's just put it like that, because he plays the charge bonus on a guy that can't actually charge right now. He had a very good chance of taking care of Garthug, but he didn't take it, and... 
The dice gods are turning in my favour. They were fucking me quite ferociously to begin with, but right now they seem rather friendly. <laughs> Very friendly. It's a nice presentation though. I really like the way like the dice fall down. I wish there was a little bit more of an explanation. Like maybe have like, okay, have it fall down and then be like, all right, so this dice does that. You can hover over it. It's like, okay, this means this. Um, just in case. Because of course you're going to get used to it fairly quickly, but for beginning players, it would be very nice to have a little bit more in the way of tooltips. So power phase, for example. A tooltip there saying what exactly is the power phase? What exactly is the activation phase? And so on. That would be quite, quite welcome. I have moved everything, everyone but Garthok. Um, and I think we're going to be moving Garthok now for obvious reasons, since keeping that objective doesn't really benefit me all that bloody much. And getting him out of um, the range of all of the bad guys, that would benefit me quite nicely. Let's have a go at Bonecutter. Let's hope that my good fortune keeps going. It, it fucking doesn't. Right. It, oh, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have needed a crit and a success to beat that, so... Dict is moi on that particular occasion. Okay, we have turned things around a little bit, at least, from our very early misfortune. Um, I wish I could say that it was my brilliant strategy, but honestly, I just got really lucky with the RNG there for a bit. Really lucky as well. So, supremacy, that is probably not going to happen. Annihilation, that's probably not going to happen either, so we're going to dump those, we're going to keep denial. A vampiric weapon would be neat, but I don't actually think it's going to benefit me all that much here. Furious charge and rage fueled attack, though. That would be neat. So I'm going to dump vampiric weapon, hoping to get... Oh, no, it's, never mind. It's, it's a slightly different turn. There you go. Hoping to maybe get um, an immediate buff or something. And a weapon, that would be nice. Wrathful Blow, one plus dice, that's good. Yep, that, that's pretty good. That's for Garthuk as well, which would be useful. Next initiative, I would very much so like to win this, uh, which I believe I do not. And he gives the turn to me. Well, did I? I slip it. It would be a little bit nice if it was a bit clear, because I think the AI just gave me the activation there, which seems dumb from its perspective. Uh, right, so I've got three dice, or uh, two dice, three damage on this. Do I have, do I have some good um, dice on anybody? Not really, sadly. Hmm. <laughs> well... Gothic is the closest, and I don't really need to get an activation on him, so I think he's probably my best bet here. It would have been nice to buff him, but honestly, it's way better to just get the first attack off and then pray to the gods. One. Dick. Right. Yeah, all I needed was uh, two successes there, and I just did not get it, which is very, very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate, because that leaves Bonecutter up for yet another turn. I've been trying quite desperately to get him down, but it has not been working out at all, unfortunately. Oh, well, uh, the gods doesn't just hate me, that much is obvious. It seems to have a quite profound dislike of the AI as well. Now, that is a bit unfortunate, because that means Bonecutter is now in my territory, and I really don't want him in my bloody territory. Um... Garthuk still needs to empower. I still... Bloody hell. Bloody, 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 bloody hell. Right. Get the charge off. Let's do three dice. Fucking fuck me. Yes, that's enough. That's, that's just enough. Oh, Jesus. I can definitely see why people would like this, because, uh, again, it, it it does have a lot of that exhilarating, like, oh god, please. Okay. Let's play that immediately. Get more and more damage up. That would be nice for my gores more, obviously. Um, <laughs> my gore, yep, play that on him, absolutely. Let's get that on him. That'll give me another point, uh, hopefully, when I kill somebody. Basher? You, who are you going to go for? Oh, yeah, I'm going to need... Yep, yep, even a crit wouldn't have saved me from that, I don't think. Ouch. 
That does mean that he's moved, though, so he's a little bit less dangerous for now. All right, Magor, my boy, you only have two dice to do this with, which is rather unfortunate. But uh, if you hit him, you do smash him. All right, do we go for smashing dice or do we go for slashing dice? Um, we, we go for this because it has cleave. All right. Uh, one. And that's enough. Smash. Ooh. All right, we are in the lead by... F <laughs> well, no, no, no. We, we're tied, actually. Never bloody mind me. Uh, but assuming... Yeah, Denial. Denial will give me three points, so I'm set to win this because he charged, so he can't move. I feel like the, uh, the AI gave me this victory more than I actually earned it, but... Um, <laughs> well, who cares? All right, let's get that on Zarkuz. I wish you could kind of just drag it. Just... Oh, there you go. Drag it onto them, I hope you need. Because I keep trying to do that, because I'm like, ah, right, cool. All right. uh, raged field attack as well, why not? Why not buff this little boy to highest possible heaven? He can't do anything, so sadly he just needs to end his turn. Just sit there like a poor little lad. All right, I've got one more activation. This this is a bit of a risk. This is a bit of a risk. I, If I was a smart boy, I wouldn't do this. I would not do this, but I'm not a smart boy. I'm Chaos, so... Whee! Now, I do get hits on both... Ooh, that's a critical. Ah, uh, yep, he's boned. Even a critical would not have saved him there. Oh, God, have I... I've done a stupid... I've done a very big stupid. I thought that was... Ah, uh, yeah, no. I forgot. Yeah, no. I was I was like, he's just a normal orc, right? Which means he has four total hit points, which means if I deal this damage, he dies because he's, he's got one wound. But no, of course not. He's got the plus one wound so far, yes. <sighs> Stupidity has interfe interfered, but I do not believe it has interfered quite enough to screw me because I can now play Denial, which gives me three objective markers and secures me the win. Yeah. It is, it is definitely a game with a fair bit of strategy involved in the objective system. I, I do like that. I do like the idea of the combined card miniature stuff. And most games are over in like 20, 25 odd minutes. So you can play it fairly quickly as well. I don't think it's necessarily for me because I'm not a huge fan of the volatility. It's a bit too volatile for me. Though you can play other factions that reduce the volatility. If you play the undead, for example, you've got a lot more dudes and so you're going to get fucked a lot less by the volatility. I picked Chaos specifically because they are a very volatile faction. They rely on throwing a lot of dice around and in a game where a lot of dice is four, <laughs> Yeah, it gets volatile real quick. But all in all, it's it's not a bad entry once you get into it. I was really confused to begin with. The UI is not intuitive at all, and the tutorial needs some work. It really does, because I was super confused when I was getting into this first time. But now that I've started to figure out a little bit more about it, I'm starting to see the charms slowly but surely shining through. So, if this looks interesting, it should be available for early access right now over on Steam. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Until then, have a good day.